Hey guys, so I'm back with another hair tutorial. This company I've already worked with was a chalk hair or chalk hair. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but they have some bomb ass hair. This is their Brazilian Virgin Kinky Straight, and this is the frontal. I think this is a bigger frontal, but this is how I prepare to make my wigs. I do have all of my needles aligned and threaded, and I'm going to be using this dome cap for today. The frontal is actually either 18 or 20 inches, and I also have two 22s and a 20 inch bundle okay so three all together the hair is very textured as you guys can see um, as I was saying I think the frontal is a little bit bigger meaning a little bit more in length I mean not in length but in width I'll let you guys know down below where you can find all of the information so this is the actual wig block head that I use for most wigs and I'm just going to go ahead and put her on Sally because that's what we're going to call this wig block head but this video her name is going to be Sally now first of all I do apologize for the angle of the video because normally um well not normally always I, this is how I make my wigs I just sit down on the couch and I have my wig block head just plopped right here um between my thighs so that way I can you know be comfortable so you want to make sure that you take this end right here that I'm showing you and you want to place it towards the edge of the wig cap so as you guys see I'm taking that edge or that end okay and that's kind of like a guide and I'm going to just place me a needle right here you want to make sure that you get really good needles from anywhere I would say go to like Walmart or Target you know that's where they're most cheapest or if you have a fabric store you just want to take that end and you want to place it right to the edge of the wig cap I would definitely say do not try to make a wig on a styrofoam head because a million times out of a million times it's going to come out too small so i already went ahead and sewed the frontal sewn the frontal on because i didn't even know my camera had died battery had died but i'm sorry um so i'm just going to go ahead and take another needle and just place the actual trap down and you want to make sure that you don't pierce through the elastic now i take my needle and i pull it through like you know kind of like in a loop so that way it's knotted and then i take it right here and i just take the needle and I take the thread, I wrap it around the top, and then I just wrap it like two or three times so that it can make another knot. And I do this like about three times on the edges, especially if it's fold over method, then I do it like four times because it will definitely allow it to, you know, lay a lot flatter. So I'll take the needle, as you guys see, and I'll just loop it through. Now, I don't really like the really small needles because they're hard to use, like they're just too short. So I like the um, jumbo size ones, like the really big long needles. I have to remember to post the size that I use down below because the short ones just make a lot, it just makes work a lot harder. So you probably don't see, but there is a piece of thread in my free hand, which doesn't have a needle in it. I'm holding it because I will pull the needle through it, which is kind of giving it like a ladder effect. I mean, there's different ways you can do it. It all depends on you, but you definitely need to make sure that you're not piercing through the elastic because if you do, it will stiffen up and won't be able to stretch, even though you don't need as much stretch, but you definitely don't want to pierce through. So I just take it and I'm also, um, I have let go of the thread and I'm probably going so fast, but I loop it around the needle also. So it's kind of like making a knot right there at the top. Um, and you probably can't see, but if you like put the needle behind the thread some type of way, then it will make a knot. I really can't explain it. I would definitely have to show you it like in a more in-depth tutorial. I also do have a tutorial coming up on the wig caps that I like to use. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so yeah, um, you definitely want to just continue doing this process. It's through the entire process. It's more or less like making a U part wig, you know what I'm saying? Same method. Um, you don't have to cut your tracks. Normally I don't, but because this hair is so textured, I definitely had to cut the tracks because I wanted it to lay as flat as possible. So that is the reason why I cut it. It all depends on how thick the weave, the weft is though too. So I, I normally don't, but sometimes I do. You know, it all just depends on the mood that I'm in and the cap too. But being that this hair is pretty textured, um, I thought it would be best to, you know, just kind of like cut the tracks. So as you guys see, I put the needle through and this is probably not like a really good close up, but I'm going to try to make it as best. You put it through, you take the thread, I wrapped it behind and around and then wrapped it around the needle in the front. Um, yeah. I think I have another brush in here where it's a lot more, um, you can see a lot better. But this just will allow your ends or your fold over method to like lay really flat. And so now I'm just going to take the thread, I cut it, and then I'm just going to tie it like three more times in a knot because, you know, 
God forbid your trap come loose and you out and you think it will cute and all and then your trap come off. So I'm just going to repeat the same process here again. And I apologize for my nails because I was so excited about them going back, but they didn't. So as you guys seen, I showed you how far apart I wanted the traps. I didn't really want them too close because it's already textured hair. And I really didn't want a lot of hair on this wig. Like the last one that I made, I only used two two traps, uh, two traps, two um, bundles, and I was good with that. But this one, it's longer in length, so you, of course, you know, the tracks are not as long or, you know, you know, they're just not as long. So once again, I am just, you know, tightening down my wefting tracks. As you guys see, I wrap the thread around the needle in the back. So basically what you want to do is you want to poke it through, take the, ne the thread and just wrap it behind the needle eye and then wrap it around twice the needle tip and then cut it. That will make a really secure knot and will also allow it to lay super duper flat, okay? And you just wanna make sure that you're doing it. Now see, wrap it around. Well, I'll turn it back. Let's see, okay. So, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna take the thread and I wrap it behind the head of the needle and then around three times. And then that is about that. And then I'm doing the ladder method here. So you do see the thread right there that I'm holding. This just makes it easy if I hold a piece of the thread. So that way I don't have to keep looping it around, but I do switch it up from time to time. And I think like kinky straight hair is my favorite because it's just like bomb.com. Definitely one of my favorites. And I'm just gonna secure the ends right here so that way, you know, it doesn't unravel or anything like that. As you guys see, I'm just piercing through the track and I'm taking the thread, I am wrapping it behind and around the needle tip like three times. And then you still wanna knot it. Even though I did cut this end really short, I had a heck of a time trying to actually knot this one at the end. All right, you guys, so I finished making the wig from Chapel Hair, and I hope that's how I'm pronouncing it. You guys know I will botch anything, okay, like, except for a meal. Oh, well, sometimes I do those, too, but, you know. Finished the hair, and it came out absolutely lovely. I did dye it. At first, I was going to just leave it as is, but then I realized, like, girl, you already made one like that, like, about a few weeks ago, like, a month ago, or a month and a half ago, or two months ago. God knows. I just made one recently like that, okay? And I didn't really want to make it look identical, because to me, it did look identical, but I just wanted to give it a little bit of a different look. I love yakky or kinky hair. I love it because it just looks so natural. It looks so Afrocentric. It looks just so, just so realistic. And that's one of my favorite blends and one of my favorite textures. I could wear that every single day. I don't know about y'all, but for real girl, I could wear that. I could wear that, that texture every single day. One, I did dye it, like I said, I was gonna bleach it, but then I was like, nah, I don't feel like bleaching it. Because you gotta watch the bleach. Sometimes it might over bleach. So I just really didn't feel like it. So I went back to my usual, which I normally do. You guys have seen this for years, and that's the reason why I didn't record that portion because I've already shown you guys this on so many different occasions. But I did use this right here, which is the Dark and Lovely box of dye. I used four boxes, and the color is 378 Honey Blonde. I like this stuff. It works amazing. Of course, on the sides, it's going to show you lighter colors. You'd have to probably do it like that a couple times just to achieve like that particular look. So if your hair is like this, which is what the color I had, it's definitely not going to turn like this on the first go. You'll probably have to do it twice. But I only do it once because, you know, it is chemicals, it is still processing the hair, but four boxes of this was just enough. Like I was initially going to get three, but then I was like, no. So after that, or prior to that, I bleached the frontal afterwards and it lifted so nice. But here's the issue, my fault. Um, some of the bleach seeped into the roots of the hair, which is no biggie to me because I actually do like it like that. Meaning that it may have the roots or a little bit past the roots, maybe, you know, like a lighter color, like a blondish or like a light, light brown. I like it like that because honestly, it allows the hair or the scalp to look more natural. You can see more of the scalp. So I really do prefer it like that, especially with thicker hair. So it did come out good to me. And then I just used the Sally Beauty Supply Store Purple Shampoo, which is similar comparison to the shimmer lights um and then after i created the unit and then i finished dyeing it and all that good stuff i did pre-bleach it i mean excuse me 
pre-tweezed some of it. It really didn't need much pre-tweezing because the frontal was like really good. It was pre-plucked. It was a nice hairline, but for me, I wanted it a little bit more. But the cool thing about it is I didn't have to do as much work as all. unit. This is the color that it came out. Kind of like auburnish brown color. Very pretty. It's a lot of hair. I used two and a half of the bundles. I was really only trying to use two, but the hair was longer. So, of course, the tracks weren't as long. Um, I did put an elastic band in it. And I just sewed it on a spandex dome cap. And there are only combs in the back area. Um, the unit fits really snug. Okay, I did take in a little bit right here just so that way it could fit a lot more tighter and that's about it you guys. So we're going to jump right into this real quick so that way my memory card don't run out of space and I don't hold you guys up for as long as possible. Okay guys, so being that the air tabs are a little bit too big, you know, you always have to customize your frontals, whether you make them or you purchase them already made. You definitely have to customize it to fit your head properly. So what I'm doing right now is taking some of these hair clips and I'm just going to place the hair on the sides. And I'm just going to feel around my ear of where I want the actual lace to be cut. So as you guys see, I did show you like a portion of my ear. I'm just going to clip it back right here. And I'm just going to cut right on this part. I try to cut in between the hair so there's no blunt cut. And I'm also going to cut right above my ear. But as you guys see right here, it's going to take me longer than usual because I don't want to just cut straight across. If I cut straight across, then I'm going to cut the actual hair. So I'm just trying to basically snip at the lace so that way the hair is still left in length as you guys see. And then I'm just going to kind of like form the portion of where I would want my sideburns or that's what you want to call them. And then as norm per usual, I'm just going to take my rat tail comb and kind of like give this unit some baby hairs. I try not to do them so often because, you know, but you do need some just to camouflage the lace a little bit. I would suggest either using a razor comb or like a eyebrow um, trimmer either way. So you don't want a blunt cut when it comes to baby hairs. So I kind of like twist mine around and you know, normally when I do my baby hairs, I will lift them up. So like, I don't really like them pasted down to my face. So I'll just sculpt them like that. And then I'll just kind of like take the rat tail end of the comb and I will just pull them back up and just kind of like, you know, un unpaste them. Now, you just want to repeat the same steps for the ear tabs on the opposite side. And I'm just going to take, you know, per use my styling is styling mousse. So I thought I would give this new baby hair brush some, or edge control brush, some, you know, work room. I'm not saying like it's my favorite, but I like the part with the spatula type on the back, but I could really just use the back of the toothbrush, you know, my normal styling brush. Um, the brush is okay. Um, it, I don't, I'm not gonna say it was a waste of money with this edge brush, but it was okay. So as you guys see, I'm just gonna style my baby hairs. Um, I did thin it out, and as you guys know, per use, Pump It Up Gold Super Hold Hairspray. This is the only one that I use. I know a lot of people like to use the Got To Be Free Spray. I have that as well, but, you know, it doesn't hold like the Pump It Up, so, you know. And as you guys see, Old Trusty is back on deck. Yes, Old Trusty Sculpting Brush is back on deck. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You do see I got the other one in the hand. Not really sure why, but hey. And I'm just going to put the Pump It Up spray on the lace, not the baby hairs, but just the lace, as you guys see right here. And you can just take a couple of pumps and use your fingers and just dab it in. And then you want to take your blow dryer and place it on the cool and just take either the back of the toothbrush that's hard or the rat tail comb and just rub it down as you are cooling it off. I'm telling you guys, this hairspray is like bomb.com. It will definitely have your wig laid down for days. Okay? Like, seriously. And if you have an old trusty sculpting brush, then you're definitely good to go. So I also take the nozzle of the um, blow dryer, and I use that to flatten the hair down. This is some thick hair, like, for real. Um, this is a lot. It's not thick like that, but it is a little bit more textured than my last one that I made, which is a good thing. And so now this is the type of style I'm going to do. As you guys see, um, you can't really tell where the roots are lighter. And like I said, I like it like that because you can see it more. But I do like to have dark roots somewhat, like if it was the hair was growing out. But I really do like this unit. It came out nice. Um, 
and you can tell like this one is a little bit more textured than the last one that I made which is good so I'm going to take my wax stick and this is just really good to press the hair down as you guys see it will give you some sleek sleek hair no flyaways or anything like that please don't ask me why I was trying to comb it down with that little fine rat tail comb I don't know what I was thinking but I just decided to blow dry some of it because I wanted to get some of the work done prior and let me tell y'all first of all this hot comb is not one of my favorites. It only goes, up, I think, to like 20, it says, on the thermometer. It took me a minute to do this hair. I actually had to end up doing it off camera, and I didn't even want to use the hot comb anymore. I used my brush straightener, which worked just as well. I think it worked a little bit better because the hot comb, I just don't like it. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of where I can get a good one, then just let me know. all of the information down below for you of where you can get this amazing hair they have some really nice hair though and it's a very reliable hair so you guys on that note make sure you rate comment subscribe check the info box for all of the links and on that note let me know what you think i love you guys make sure you thumbs this video up share it with your friends and family and those who you don't like on social media share it share it share it okay if you don't share it i'm not gonna make no more videos well, I'm lying if I said that, but you know what I'm saying? I will definitely see you guys on a soon to come. So make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys on the other side. I'll definitely see you tomorrow because, you know, I'm always doing videos. And I have to go edit a video right now. And it's 9.49 at night. And I should not be editing a video. But by the time this goes up, yeah. <laughs>